they were denying almost every pregnant woman. Almost everybody that had a child in the US was being denied, even by Canada. Almost everybody that was applying for a childbirth were being denied. Almost everybody that was having a case like mine pending that, that had a pending case with the US embassy where they say we should come and appear fiscally were being denied. I was just praising, praising loudly, speaking in tongues loudly because I was shaking. And the only way to stabilize myself was to, you know, put my, keep myself in the spirit. I'm very excited once again. I'm happy to be here. Please, I'm begging you, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. My name is Adlala once again and I'm here ready to talk about a very exciting episode. Today, I'm, I'm not going to be wasting too much time because I have a suspicion that this is going to have to be divided into two parts because it's something I can take a whole day, I can take a whole week to discuss on video and it is my experience uh, of giving birth in canada when i came back from canada um with my baby i was basically a superstar because i was getting calls or getting requests every single day about you know having a child in canada and before i went to have a child in canada even though i knew that a lot of people were having children in canada I did not know anybody in my circle that would travel to Canada for the purpose of having children. All my friends that were going to Canada were going for PR purposes, basically PR. People were not going to Canada to visit. My, my friends were not going to Canada to have children. So it was just me, myself and I, everybody I knew in my own generation were all going, going to the US or had gone to the US. So. It was a big deal for me. So let me just dial back and tell you how it all started and how I actually went to Canada. And I went at almost 39 weeks. Yes, you heard right. I traveled at almost 39 weeks. <laughs> it was some serious, in fact, the whole nine months was a serious James Bond experience. And before I something I used to, because there was a whole lot of, you know, praying and involved and praying involved. I couldn't fast because, of course, I was pregnant. <laughs> I can't be fasting. But I remember saying that when I come back from Canada, I was going to let everybody know my story. Because for people that know my story, people in the inner caucus that know my story, my story was such a supernatural one. I was going to let everybody know my story because I wanted to help people. And so that when people see that, um, they see my child, they will not just think it was the ordinary story of everybody traveling to Canada to have a child. Mine was actually extraordinary. So let me just dial back, as I said, I had my first child in the US uh, in 2017. So I always wanted to have another child almost immediately because I just feel like, for me and from where I'm coming from, I always wanted to, you know, get pregnant like immediately, immediately after the first child. After the child is just born, I want to get pregnant and have. So I just want there to be maybe one year, nine months difference, kind of. I didn't want to have all those two year difference, three year difference because I just wanted to raise my children close to each other and bam, I'm done. I can just go back and face my world because I tend to projectize everything and. Normal project management at Lola, I projectized my delivery. Oh, so we're celebrating my um, son's one year. I was already like one month pregnant. So I was like, ah, that's 2018. I was like, okay, so I'm going to have my child in US in May. And oh, because I, as a frequent traveler like me, what is me? I don't have a problem with visa now. Nah. Is it not visa? We'll just go there and we we'll just get the visa like we used to get the visa in the past next thing you know when i uh next thing the old policy came 
Because before, what we do is that we just drop our passports, Dropbox, and we just get our visa like three days later. That's how it happened in the past. So, next thing, I drop my passport. Okay, my visa, I had to wait. I got pregnant in um, November, I mean, sorry, in September. My visa expired the next year, February, and I was due in June. So, I waited to, you know, you have to wait till your visa expires. Just so, just to be on the safe side, I waited till my visa expired in February. My visa expired February 4, February 6. I think I applied February 11 or February 9. And um, maybe 10 days later, they returned my passport and asked me to go and book an appointment to appear at the American Embassy. By this time, they were returning everybody's passports. In fact, the only person whose passport I know that wasn't returned was my mom. I don't know why, but her passport wasn't returned. But every single Nigerian was getting asked to show up at the embassy. I said, okay now, what's there? Is it not to show up at the embassy? Is it today we started showing up at the embassy? We show up at the embassy now. I booked a date for to shop at the embassy. For one reason or the other, I could not click submit. I could see the dates. I could I could not click submit. At that point in time, I knew there was something wrong. But every other person that was seeing everybody, every other person, they were not seeing dates at all. So it was like ah. Uh -uh. They are not seeing dates now. They will block the dates. What will happen is that by then, they were blocking dates. They will say there are no dates available. Once there are dates available, they will send emails that now there are dates available. Go and book. So they were holding dates because of the backlog. There was so much backlog. But me, my own issue was that when I see dates, I cannot book. Chocolates of when I don't even see dates. I was like, what is all this? What's all this and everything? Ah, February, no dates. By March, they had told me to go and enlist somebody to go and sort the whole thing out for me. Even the people I tried to, no dates. Okay, so we tried to call the, um, the people, the agency in charge of dates booking. They locked me, mistakenly, they locked me with every other person. Everybody that wasn't seen dates not knowing that my own case was special so by this time normally i'm supposed to, i'm doing june i'm supposed to travel in may this time it was already getting to april i was already getting anxious by april i stopped working i stopped going to the factory you get and i just went home because by this time i was going to this was going to 10 weeks to delivery i went home and i was just mentally tired okay but before i went home my mom applied for the canada visa in january and i think she got a visa like um four weeks or five weeks later and she was like why don't i apply for canadian visa okay she applied in january she got it in february by this time i applied for the u.s visa and they had already sent my passport back she was like why don't i apply for canadian visa i was like me canadian visa like what's my business with canada Canada is a place that, for me, just exists in name. It does not exist in my radar. I don't plan to go to Canada. I don't plan to visit Canada. Canada. We, have, we have no relationship. So I was like, me, Canada, what's, I'm going to the U.S. to give birth to my child. What is my own Canada? She was like, okay, no problem. By this time in March, by the time all the things were, all the old craziness was going on, <laughs> guess what? My passport was going to expire that year, October, October 1st. Hey, April. And you know that once it's April, once there's like six months on your, on your passport, there's already a problem. By the time it was ending March 30, you know, getting to March 30, I said, ah, there's a problem here. There is a problem here. It's like this Canada. We might need to revisit <laughs> We might need to revisit this Canada issue. By this time, Canada was now denied people. Because now everybody that, a lot of people that have been, that have now been going to get, that gotten dates, that have been going to the U.S. Embassy, 
were now getting rejected. Once you have your first child in the US, they are going to reject you. I was like, me, she be, I mean, I'm not owing anything now. But in fact, they were just looking for ways to be. I mean, that's 2019. I don't know if you remember, if you're a child, like, remember, it was crazy. They're just looking for ways to reject people. So, they told me that I should pack all my law, all my, all my documentation, everything, this, that, 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 that. I didn't get dates. Even when everybody was seeing it. So by the time they were going to work on my issue, was when they now released dates to everybody. But I could not still book. That's when they now knew that, okay, this girl, her issue is just has it wasn't the general no date issue it was then they started working on my issue by then it was april 1st i mean by then it was april basically and by this time i've already gone to the passport office to start applying for a new passport because my passport was going to expire in october and nobody's going to stamp me in on the seat on the visa that on the passport that was going to expire in six months so by this time i thought i was with my big stomach i'd gone to well not so big anyway and you find out why later i tried to fast track it because by this time i'm supposed to be canada in quotes <laughs> i'm supposed to be in canada in may i was just applying for my passport and everything so i applied my passport came out then i applied for my visa by this time i'd been reading i'd been reading and one thing I noticed is that Nigerians don't like to read. When somebody wants to apply for a visa, instead of them to go to Naira land to read about people's experiences and get everything, they don't like to read. They just want to come and get shortcuts and say, what did you do? What hospital did you use? This, that, 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 that. They want you, and it's not only in visa application, in life generally. They want you to download everything on the inside their brain. They don't want to read. So, me, I read because I like reading and I like finding out things myself. I read even when I was ready, even when I was waiting for my US dates. I read and read and read and read my life out of Naira Land. I read every single thing. I became an expert. In fact, I became a, a, a Canadian birth consultant. I knew every single thing. I knew the states, the towns that were expensive, the ones that they are. I knew everything about giving birth in Canada. When I now got my passport now, Anna, I got my passport. Let's say I got my passport on the Thursday or a Friday. I was going to apply. I was going to drop my application on a Monday. I could not, by the time I was going to drop my application, you know, there are two ways to apply in Canada. There's a paper application and the online application. I mean, now, as a millennial, <laughs> I said, whatever, I wanted to do online application. That's how the pot is seized. I wanted to, I just could not figure a way around it. The, it was later I, re I heard that they had an issue. At the point where I was trying to apply, they had an issue with the online application. So I applied paper application. At first, I was going to apply with my son. When I mean apply with my son, my son is an American citizen, so he doesn't need visa. But I was going to tell them that I was going with my son. So that day, when I went to drop all my documents, I went with I put the place which says where who, who are you going with? Um, I can't travel without my son. I said my son is a baby. I can't travel without my son. I put my son. But <laughs> the only speed to make me start to me. <laughs> when I was seeing you got that's why I said read, read. When I was seeing that the smallest tie you have is a guarantee or is another reason for you to be denied. That day I just got and I went there, I just removed my son from my because I did everything on my laptop. I removed my son from my laptop, the application. Psh, Printed it out on PDF, went to print it out again, and just changed that my application page and took my son off the document. But of course, I have to put my son's international passport, you know, as per your family and everything. I did everything, but I just removed my son from the travel, whatever. Before this time, I got all my documents, my documents from my friend, my friend of 17 years in Canada. It was one wrote my invitation letter. I've gotten everything. I know that I've already applied to the U.S. Embassy 
in, the one that they asked me to show up um, physically. So all those documents, I already put them together. My Bank of America account. I already put everything. I didn't put that I was going to give birth. I didn't use um, medical. I just used stories because... I didn't have time to start looking for additional dollars to support a uh, living there because if you are traveling out on your own, I, you can use four thousand dollars. But by the time you are saying you are going to give birth and everything, you might have to use ten thousand dollars. I do not have anywhere to go and start looking for six thousand dollars or something in just two days. I didn't want to lie, so I didn't want to start looking for money. And of course, it will show you if you just start packing up money that does not belong to you. So I just packed up all my documents for my american um for the american one day i put my land because my mom had already told me and you already know canada likes documents and they are going to investigate every single document they like documents so i put my land the land i bought as a single person i put my car even though my car was on a panasa car like that it was a big thing i put my car i put every what did i put tenancy agreement every single thing that you know, just will let them know that I'm not running away and that I have enough ties here in Nigeria. I put every single thing I could put. So when I put it, I um, submitted. You know, everything was just rush, rush. It was now time to wait. Hey! That waiting period was the real test. Because, you know, it's not like you're waiting to give birth to your child. You are waiting. You cannot book delivery in the hospital. And your doctor cannot write your feet to fly report because your visa is not out. You're just waiting. Waiting. So I stopped work at 31 weeks or 30 weeks. Or April though. 30 weeks. 31 weeks. 32 weeks. 33 weeks. 34 weeks. 35 weeks. <laughs> I was waiting. Me that on a normal day, by 36 weeks, by 34 weeks, I bought my ticket. By 36 weeks, I'm out of the country. Which ticket? 36 weeks, you don't even know whether you are going to get visa. By this point, at this point in time, people, you know, I started hearing a lot of whispers. I was praying every night. I was holding on to word. Every time I want to give up, every night, I felt like giving up. Every single night, I felt like just giving up. And you will find out that why giving up was not an option. Because it was that giving up. I don't know when I'm going to mention it in this episode or the next episode. It was that giving up that made it, I mean, that not giving up that made it possible for me to be able to get my achieved goal. Every night, I will pray. I will pray tired. I will pray, you know, by this time, my heartbeat was reduced now because now the child is sitting on your on your lungs, so your you can't draw long breaths as you used to. I will pray. I will read my Bible. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray in tongues. I will declare. I have declaration. In fact, by this time, I was not more declaring for my business. I logged off. I was just declaring. I was just praying, 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 praying. Thirty-four weeks, I was praying. This thing did not come. It wasn't come back. 36 weeks. By 36 weeks, ah, everybody. Uh, when, did, when I, by 36 weeks, it was towards the end of May. I was due, due June 11. I was praying. Hey, God. It was a trauma. <laughs> it was a spiritually draining experience. Emotionally draining. Spiritually draining. So they now, okay, America now sorted, America now sorted my dates out. They now gave me a date in September. I was like, by this time, I already logged off America. I was like, I beg, I beg, I beg. The date is the September. I'm due in June. I'm not going to America again. It was now, you know, declaring. I was seeing myself walking into the airport. I was seeing myself giving birth. I was seeing, I was picturing all those things. I was forming a picture in my mind. June, due June 11. Every day, by, by the second to the last week in May, Almost every day, I would just go track my passport. Later, I would track my passport. They would say, see at the Canadian embassy. They say, see there. Later, I started tracking my passport. They would say, no records found. When, when they said, no records found, I just knew that, okay, they, had, they were done with my case. And that passport was on its way to 
Nigeria, whether with a visa or without a visa. <laughs> ah, the thing now came to waiting now. I was now sending every day. I'll be chatting here because you say it's on his way, it's on his way, it's on his way. By May 28th, this is a child that is due June 11th. We are already getting to the end of May. I now sent a message, normal chats on May 28th. Where is my visa? Because what is that? Every two, two days. I said, every two, two days I send the child. In fact, I was going to VFS. I went to VFS three times because I heard that sometimes the pastor will be at VFS. VFS will not call you. I went there three times. I said, I applied for this thing six, seven weeks ago. Where is my passport? They'll say, it's not here. I'm like, how come it's not here? here? People that applied after me, they have gotten their own. They'll say, it's not here. here. Later, the guy will come with my big stomach. He'll say, uh, it's not here. here. Anyway, that's the same thing I was doing on this thing. Where is my passport? May 28th, the lady just say, said, it's on its way from the embassy. That's the, the Canadian, Canadian embassy in Nigeria to the VFS office. I said it's on its way. It was like, it was like a miracle. It was, I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell anybody. It was like a miracle. Like my pa this is not my visa. Passport is on its way. Tomorrow is May 29. May 29 in Nigeria is a public holiday. May 30 was a first day. And I'm supposed to leave this country this weekend. Because my plan was that June must not meet me in Nigeria. You know what it means for June to meet me in Nigeria? That means I will have that baby on that plane. This was May 28th. I ran. I just got into my car. I drove. I went to VFS. I said, where's my passport? They said, it's not here. I said, my passport is on its way. This is what your something told me. I, even if it's 6 p.m. Because you people are not going to open tomorrow. I said, are you opening tomorrow? They said, no. I said, even if it's 6 p.m., even if it means that I will wait here, I will wait for that passport. He said, let me, let me make some calls. And I said, okay, I should wait a minute that the passport is on its way. To the VFS office. I waited. It not even long. Maybe like 30 minutes later or something. The guy came. Gave me my passport. Ah! It was. You know this. You know the shape of a passport. is like the size of your hands. But it was. The passport. The, the, the envelope was long. Like the, something was like. Say God. Whenever the envelope is long like that. It's always bad news. Because it means that. There is documents explaining one thing like that. Long envelope, it to be a small envelope. The way they'll just give you, you know, the American just give one, give me your passport back, you just see your visa and everything. One long envelope. Hey, I said, God, why is the envelope long? Why is it this? I just open, Sasha, so you know, you just compose yourself and just comport yourself so that if it's a disgrace, you're gonna be crying in your car and everything. I shall went, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I could not get to my car. I could not wait to get to my car to find out. I just opened the passport like this. I opened it. I just saw my name in red on a page. <laughs> I think I, I just took a picture because before this day, I had listed every, I had listed nine people. That if once my visa comes out, I will just send them a picture of the visa page because these were the people that were in anxiety with like me. Like nine people that they knew my inner struggles. That these were the people I was going to send, and the only person I told when I was going to the to the embassy was my friend Dolapo. She said, "Don't worry, you will get it." And when I went to the embassy, I was just speaking in tongues from my house. So the embassy was like maybe 20 minutes drive or 15 minutes drive. I mean, to the VFS center, I was speaking in tongues. I don't know whether the tongues are supposed to, 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 to change a negative uh, result to a positive result. What's now? I was just praising, praising loudly, speaking in tongues loudly because I was shaking. And the only way to stabilize myself was to, you know, put my, keep myself in the spirit and everything. So when I just opened it and I saw that passport, I snapped it. And by this time, they were denying 
almost every pregnant woman, almost everybody that had a child in the US was being denied, even by Canada. Almost everybody that was applying for a childbirth was being denied. Almost everybody that was having a case like mine pending that, that had a pending case with the US embassy where they say we should come and appear fiscally were being denied. I was just looking. I just sent the picture to everybody. I mean, once I sent the picture to everybody, nobody, they just said, they didn't even, they didn't even need to respond. They already know the, the reason why they were getting the picture. And if I could leave the country the next day, I was leaving. First day, I got my dollars. I got my tickets. I did everything. Friday, I was just packing, packing, packing. I wanted to travel on Friday, but there was another thing. You know what? Anyway, I left on Saturday, June 1st. I was almost 39 weeks. Then on Sunday, 2nd of June, without a doctor, because if you know Canada, you will know uh, there is no doctor <laughs> until you get to Canada. Anyway, so I think I'm done with this episode. In the part two, I'm not going to be telling you about the experience. Giving birth in Canada, U.S. accommodation, you giving birth in Canada versus giving birth in U.S., you know, the pros and cons of each, if you are considering giving birth in the U.S. or in Canada or whatever, what you need to look out for, how you need to apply and everything, what you should bother your head on, what you should not bother your head on, I will teach you all that in the second episode. So yeah, see ya! Please click, click the subscribe button. I want you all to please support me in my YouTube journey and let's see how it goes.